Hi, and I am Cammie, the Hooked Hardy. You all know my lovely co-host, Sarah, the Hawkeye Hardy. And we have got a treat for you today. We have got, now, granted, he was a turncoat, but we still like him. We've got Wade Barrett himself, Mr. Matthew McCall. Hi, Matt. Hello. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Welcome. It's good to have you. How are you? I'm doing really well. It's wonderful to see you both. Wonderful to have you. We are so, so happy to have you on because we are very, very excited to get to see things through Wade's eyes because, you know, the poor guy was probably suffering the whole time, right? <laughs> in, many, in many ways, I think, you know, we all do. Uh, <laughs> to borrow uh, uh, an ethos from Buddhism. But uh, yeah, you know, Wade, uh, we, we, he had his own things going on. <laughs> okay, well, we'll we'll get to that in a we'll second. That. <laughs> um, let's start out, just get to know you a little bit. Um, what or who inspired you to become an actor? Um, my friend Nancy Chapel. Uh, I was in, uh, I, I was uh, growing up, I moved around a lot. All my family are from Prince Edward Island. I was born in Montreal. And then we'd move like every two or four years, going to different cities. My dad worked for the railroad. So one of the, you know, I really enjoyed it. I got to see a lot of the country, but I think what I sort of learned later in life, what I was doing was I, from an early age, I was, I sort of excelled at art and music. And so those are the, those were the through lines through all of my moves when I go to make new friends, go to new schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, so through all those moves, I was always the new kid, basically, but I was always known as, well, that's the artist, that's Matt, the, the art guy. You know, I sort of, I like, I felt very comfortable in art class. Um, and then in grade 12, it all of a sudden became apparent that everybody just assumed I was going to go to, you know, a fine art college or something like that. And were asking me, you know, do you have your portfolio together? And uh, where, you know, where do you want to go? And through all those conversations, I sort of realized that I didn't have anything against going. I never, I never had considered that I wanted to go, though. Um, and I was just like, well, it just seems like everybody wants to make this decision for me. And, you know, especially at that age, you want to make decisions for yourself or you want to, to show that you're making decisions for yourself. So people will treat you with respect and like an adult. And so I decided very impetuously, uh, no, I don't think I'm going to go to art school. I'm going to go to Europe uh, with $600. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's exactly what I did, though, and very quickly learned that I didn't know anything about this, the world outside of my house, really, uh, but managed to uh, live and work and travel uh, for about eight months. Um, Impressive. Yeah, I was I was surprised after you know a, a, a clunky start there. Uh, you sort of learn to figure out. Oh, this is how you do life on the road. You stop. You get a job. You make some money. You make some friends. Exchange email addresses and move on. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, I'm making this super long story. So I get back from Europe, listless don't know what I'm going to do. I, I, I suppose I'm going to go to university. That sounds like what I should do. My mom, love her. All she ever wanted for me was, Matthew, just get a university degree. Do anything you want in university, just please for me. It's the only thing I'll ever ask you to do for me. And so I did. Uh, and so I knew I was going to, and um, I was just back in Winnipeg, where I had finished high school, and uh, met my friend Nancy Chapel. Uh, sort of just ran into her at the, the mall. Remember when we all used to go to the mall? Wow. And uh, Long time ago. <laughs> yeah, and then, like, I think we went to like a Chili's, you know, the Chili's that they have out in the parking lots of yeah. the mall? We went to Lake and Chili's and we just got a coffee. You know, we've, I've, I've felt it was a very adult thing to do. Was, oh yeah, let's, let's go get a coffee. Just a couple of friends chatting over a cup of jaw. And Nancy <laughs> said, welcome back. Uh, what do you think you're gonna do in university? And at that point I was thinking, uh, 
anthropology, cultural anthropology, because I really enjoyed traveling and meeting new people. And I was like, oh, that's what cultural anthropology is. It's the study of people and cultures and interactions. That sounds like something I could be very interested in. And I also wanted to learn Spanish because I was very taken with the, the charm and good looks of Spain. Ah, and, por uh, supuesto. Sí, sí, sí. <laughs> Entonces, uh, entiendo español ahorita, that's for sure. I, so, I, I so I studied Spanish and anthropology was sort of what I started in at university, finished with something different. But Nancy said, oh, well, that's, uh, that's great, but what are you gonna do for art? You're the art guy. And I said, um, I don't know. I, I hadn't really thought of it. You know, I think I was just sort of moving forward from like, high school life and I was just like I'm I'm just moving forward I don't need to do that anymore and she said but aren't you interested in doing something I was like actually yeah you know but I was in a couple of bands at the time so I was pursuing I was the drummer and so that was a good thing and she said well you know if you're going to university you should think about taking a theater class and I was like oh and Nancy she was the art star in high school so she was you know, she was like the the drama queen. Right. Yeah. And so not, I mean, not even that, but it was just we it was a very cool, inclusive high school, actually. A wonderful great place to finish grade 12. And uh yeah, she was just sort of like she was known for that. I was known for the art. <laughs> you know, like it was friends were known for other things. Oh yeah. And so anyway, she just said, uh, I encourage you to to get into theater, not because you want to be a movie star, but because I think you'll really like the creative process. And I was like, oh, okay. So it was Nancy Chapel who made me choose to go to Drama 101 and uh, walked into the class. I just opened the door and it was a black box theater, which I had never seen before, but then I was <laughs> like, oh, this is the future. <laughs> and everybody was sitting in a circle. I, I'm, I guess I was late for that. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> But everybody was sitting in a circle, or maybe they were all just early, and I, I didn't know what being. We'll go with that. Yeah. <laughs> That's but great. they all turned and they just smiled and waved, and they're like, "Hi, hey, welcome!" And it just hit me in that moment. I was like, "Oh, here you all are. It's been a while. What's going on?" And I had just found, I had found my people. I'd found that space, and it's uh, it's such a, a wonderful creative outlet. So. Big thanks, big thanks to Nancy. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah we, we need to thank Nancy too. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy your project. I think she's in Florida right now. Oh, I was just there this summer. Dang it. <laughs> well, you have used that creative outlet to make quite a splash, especially on the rom-com scene. Oh, and, wow, thank you. And, well, and especially on the Christmas rom-com scene. Can you, yeah. we, we saw, we saw a Royal Christmas match on your IMDb. Can you tease oh. anything about that? Sure. I can give away the whole plot. Ooh. <laughs> we won't tell anyone. We won't tell anybody. There's the uh, Prince Edward Island mug. Oh, uh, yay. <laughs> um, well, I play a university professor who uh, is a, a very serious uh, man. He's not without his charisma. And he uh, cares deeply about his work, his studies, and uh, he, he's probably got uh, slightly too serious a hat on at this stage in his life, but that's most likely because he's focused too much on work and not nearly enough on friends and family. Doesn't quite have that balance in his life and uh, is thrust upon by his sister this princess who's coming from Morgana uh, which I believe is somewhere in the Alsace uh, Italy region okay and uh, does he know that she's a princess oh yes oh. Yeah. My, my sister basically sets the princess is coming to this university to give a speech my sister is the university uh president <laughs> and needs to secure some money or, or else the school's <laughs> gonna go down. Oh dear. <laughs> and uh, she wants, she needs 
somebody to chaperone the princess for the week that oh. she's there. Yeah, okay. so um, it's a lot of death and destruction. <laughs> <laughs> and betrayal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big twists that you wouldn't big otherwise Big twists, assume. okay. Yeah. Um, no, uh, Jordana Largi uh, was, is the princess and is somebody I've known, I've known probably for 15 years or so. I'd say that I've been uh, a friend of hers a good friend of hers for about 10 years. We'd worked together a few times and just so impressed with her talent and her work ethic and her dedication to the creative process. It's, it was, she's, she's another person that was inside my forever black box, you know, she's oh, another friend who's okay. there. And um, uh, so we got to work together on this one uh, and it was just, it was wonderful and great and hopefully many other people in the world know what it's like to be able to love what you do, to go into work, to really enjoy your coworkers and to really feel man at the end of the day. <laughs> Gosh, there's not much, there's not, not a lot of things that are better than that. Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Too true. We, we convince ourselves that there are. Yeah. Enjoy what you do and the people you're with. Big time. Oh yeah. <laughs> In the present moment, absolutely. Um, well, in last year's Christmas movie, Christmas is You, um, just, we discovered a little bit of a hidden talent. We did not realize uh, what a talent you had for singing. Oh, that wow. Was, we didn't know you were the art guy. <laughs> yeah, we, we didn't know that at the, at the time. So that uh, was But also the band guy. <laughs> so this ties back into my being a, a, in bands as a drummer. I over the years being in different bands, uh, basically from like junior high, high school, middle school, uh, uh, sophomore, senior, I think I got it. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, basically I had been in bands and early on realized that I had ideas for songs as well. Like, oh, well, you know, like I'm sitting there playing the time and kind of a new drummer at that point myself. And I'm like, oh, you know, it'd be cool if the song did this or did that. So of course you're in bands and you say, hey guys, what about doing this? And they're either like, oh yeah, that's a cool idea. Let's do that. But a lot of the time I'd explain an idea and they're like, I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. I'm like, oh, you know, it's like, <laughs> and they're like much more confused at that point. They're like, what? I'm like, don't you hear it? I was like, okay, fine, fine. So I just, uh, I had a guitar that my grandmother gave me and I pulled it out of the closet and then I taught myself guitar. So from there, then I was like, oh, I do have ideas for music uh, and I might as well just sing it myself. So I spent, well, I spent a good number of years. I put together about two two and a half albums worth of material of songs that I've written. I write a song for my family most Christmases as a Christmas present instead of buying them something. I try to write a Christmas song. I'm kind of like now I'm the Christmas guy too. <laughs> my family. And it's funny how art imitates life, life imitates art, you know. Um, so I, had, I don't think I had done any Christmas movies, probably also because of where I was in my career, but before I started writing my own Christmas songs, then sort of Christmas came calling. <laughs> That's a good idea for a Christmas song. Right down. Yeah. <laughs> came calling. Anyway, so I had been singing for years and my good friend, Alan Harmon, the director of Christmas Is You, called me up, classic Al, Matt, love you to do this film. Uh, can you sing? <laughs> And I was like, yes, totally panicking in my mind. Like, God, I don't know if I want anyone to really hear me sing. Like I'll share it with friends and whatever. But you know, at the end of the day, this is what I do. I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna do a really good job, hopefully. And uh, so I went, uh, I said yes, um, and started working on that. And then had great support and help from Becca 
who is a Becca Tobin, who is an extraordinary singer, uh, such a, a beautiful, ebullient soul as well. She's just so light and lovely. And her voice is so reflected in that way she carries herself. And so she was, she, you know, I would sing something for her on set and she's like, oh, you're great. And I was like, yeah, you know, I, 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 I really haven't sung a lot, but I, I do for myself, sang for her and she really gave me a lot of support. And um, then also we had, I think about five numbers in that movie uh, two like full numbers and then three segments of other mm -hmm. Christmas songs. Right. And uh, so for the longer pieces, we got to go in and pre-record the the sound, the the vocals, uh, and have a nice production sound on them because the other three pieces of songs that we shot was all diegetic. It was all live off the you know as we recorded the scene. We we're picking up that. We're off. singing live on set. Yeah, it was, yeah, exactly. I'm singing live versus getting to go into the studio and have the great support of uh, Dave Gen, who is a fantastic producer. Uh, and then I find out he's also the guitarist in 5440. And you're like, of course you are, bro. <laughs> he's a very rad guy. And so he put me at ease as well. So um, I'm very happy with the pre-record like the the songs that we recorded and I am also happy with the other pieces of the songs in all honesty I think Al called me a week week and a half before we started shooting so I had zero time to prep any of the wow. yeah <laughs> so that's the other thing it's like yeah I can sing give me like a month or two to sharpen up go to take some voice lessons let me call up cammy and we'll hit the piano <laughs> and um so it was it was also the the race against your own sense of of dread like can i do this right uh, but then knowing that you're just going to do it anyway <laughs> well it turned out beautifully I got two so fans here. <laughs> I really, really appreciate that, you guys. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, you know, I, I listen to a lot of my songs that I'm like, oh, I don't like my voice. But then I have friends and family who are like, no, that's really nice, man. You sound really good. You, so yeah. it's, you know, I think there's a bit of, we, we never, well, I've never truly fallen in love with the sound of my own voice. I think that's fairly so normal. People, a lot of people <laughs> feel that way. I've been accused of it, though. <laughs> Well, this is sort of along the lines of Christmas movies, but it takes a little bit of a twist. We are also big fans of another one calls the heart alum, Niall Nader, and you were in his Christmas movie and his mystery movie very close together. Mm. And we, that actually, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> we were curious, what was it like to, in one moment, have a knife fight with him and then in another be his best friend? <laughs> um, always fantastic. I'm coming into the first movie we did. We shot March 2020, just oh, before wow. the pandemic. So we actually, our production halted halfway through. And then, yes. yeah. Which, which, which movie was that? Aurora Tea Garden. Aurora was first. Okay. Yeah. And um, so going into that, I had known of Niall through uh, some friends that had worked with him. I had never met him myself. Um, just somewhat jealous of this guy's good looks and his charm and his success. You know, I'm just like, oh, <laughs> what kind of a name is Niall? And he pronounces his last name Mater. I mean, it's M-A-T-T-E-R. That's matter, man. But he's like Mater. And I'm like, oh, you guy. And uh, then you meet him and he's such a wonderful person. You're like, oh, wow, we're, you're such a great guy. Hey, man. I hope I can be your friend too. <laughs> and um, so we started working together on that, having a, just a really wonderful time. And, you know, I was the, the new cast member for this film. And, right. you know, and the, the gang had done so many of them. Um, but I was working with um, Peter and Miranda, who I had known and worked with uh, for many years. I've known Peter Benson since probably the year 2000. 
Wow. So it's nice when you get to walk onto a set and even some of the crew, in all honesty, when you get to yeah. work on this set and there's so many people that know you there already mm -hmm. uh, that you don't feel totally like the new guy, but I'm very used to that. Um, so it was just a really great set to work on. And then such a wonderful guy to work with. Like he and I like hung around and we got to chat and um, it was just a real experience, you know? Um, I don't know if I can explain it uh, any simpler than that. He, he was a wonderful guy. And so then we do the knife fight. We're having a good time with it because it's all choreography. So we're just dancing. It was, a, <laughs> it, was a, it was a good fight scene. It was a good choreography. <laughs> Thank you so much. And big props to my number one man, Jay Bell, uh, who is the stunt person who mm -hmm. does a lot of those stunts for me um i'm pretty sure though that most of my stuff was used they were mostly i think going to use jason for the fall into the pool oh I was like who are we kidding here pool like <laughs> the pool is the lowest impact sport there is let's <laughs> let's do this you guys and i love the ocean. it looked like oh. you for most of it <laughs> yes yeah so very nice. um Going from that and then getting to work on the Christmas movie, Never Kiss a Man in a Christmas Sweater, was uh, wonderful as well. Just, it was it's sort of like fortuitous is the word. Did you kind of do this? Hey! <laughs> I did, but what had happened was uh, Alan Harmon directed Christmas Is You, also was directing Never Kiss a Man in a Christmas okay. Sweater. Bingo. And as it turns out, he's got a similar relationship with so many people in this industry that when he calls, people are like, whatever I can do for you, Al. Hey, can you do this? Yes, let's do it, man. You know, just like <laughs> such a, a great person to work with that everybody wants to say yes. So I'm pretty sure Alan just called in like all the people he wanted to be in his movie. So he got I think there was three or four men in the cast and we had all been leading men in our own films. And, you know, it, it was just like a testament to Al and then getting to play uh, buddies with Niall um, was extra great because then we didn't, you, you know, we didn't, in between takes, we got to buddy around and we could just do that right up until they called rolling because that's all we're doing. Right. So it was, that, it was that's a particularly wonderful moment when you can just like all I need to do is exist and I'll get paid. <laughs> but no, it would I just mean, be I'm... really funny to put those two clips, you know, what of you and Niall in the car and you and Niall in the knife fight. Let's put those two right next to each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you seem to have a knack for playing characters that are capable of deep levels of deception. Mm. You got Parker and Aurora Tea Garden. You got Wade and When Calls the Heart. Is it a gift or do you have a specific method of how you go about this? Um, <laughs> I, yes, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I have a method. Um, I think it's called the Socratic method in that I studied uh, philosophy in university. Okay. Uh, but that, that was ultimately what I finished my degree in. Oh. And wow. so um, I remember when I was in all those classes, I knew that I was really into pursuing acting. And basically what I did was I started at U of A in Alberta, in Edmonton, took all the, philo the uh, theater electives I could, maxed out, moved to Vancouver, to pursue acting and then take more theater electives <laughs> for my last few years. Uh, some different decisions in life were made. I did some traveling instead. And then sure. I ultimately ended up in Halifax where I could finish my degree and figure out how I was gonna balance theater and a degree. So um, during the, the finishing of my degree, you're just reading a lot of like very interesting, deep, thinking. Um, I was particularly drawn to deconstructionism and uh, because of where I was in theater and, and sort of where my interests lay at that point, um, I always thought about, oh, 
how would this idea be conveyed in theater or on stage or in a song or what can we do with this really interesting concept and, and do creatively with it? So um, I, I, I guess I was drawn to the balance of all things. And I think that's sort of a, a tenet that I, I live by as well. You know, I, uh, I believe that with the good comes bad. Mm -hmm. uh, if there is love, there is evil. Um, and one cannot exist without the other. So I, I think I also have to accept that within myself, uh, I've got the full capabilities of the human animal. And uh, some of those are wonderful. And some of those are, you know, terrible and destructive. It's mm -hmm. what, what humanity has been based on so far. And so I think I, it was more of a, a desire to accept uh, the, the existence of darker places uh, and not just try to pretend that they weren't there, but not only just accept the existence, but then in a creative way, you can explore the existence of these darker spaces mm -hmm. and find out something, um, hopefully for the character or hopefully for the story. Uh, and sometimes you can even find out something for yourself. Uh, so I think my particular gift in, if I have one in, in playing darker characters is that I care that they exist. I, you know, you always hear actors talking about, you know, oh, you shouldn't judge your own character. And I think that's true. Mm -hmm. You know, you, even if you are playing the most despicable, vile thing, um, as the performer or as the character, if you were that character, do you think that about yourself? You have to be on your character's side. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, sometimes you do. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you know you're a vile, despicable guy and you end up right. like a uh, barfly, Mickey Rourke, you know, just like he's uh, one of those guys that just thinks, well, he's, he's too bad. He's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I was just thinking that, um, yeah, it's, it's something that I care about. And uh, it's, the other thing is, it's really fun. So, you know. To have the good guy facade and then it drops and then the evil <laughs> comes out. It's just, I mean, you're talking to a fellow theater major, so uh -huh. I, I get it. Right. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, I got to say the way you do it is really amazing because <laughs> every time every time we watch one of those sarah and i both say wow look at how he does it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you so had us fooled <laughs> you had us fooled we thought you were oh. you, we were rooting for you and then we're like we oh. were rooting especially as parker we're like no parker couldn't have done it no, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I was, you know, reading the script I, for Aurora Tea Garden. I was very uh, surprised. Oh, you were. Okay. And, you know, I'm seasoned at least. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, wow. Okay. I see what's going on here. I sort of suspected it was him, but they did a really good job of all the other red herrings and all the other people. Like, <laughs> There's, yeah. it, let, let's face it, there were, there were people with stronger motives than I. Yes, very and true, very true. Between you and me, Toby really is evil, Toby Levins. Uh, <laughs> okay. Duly noted. Yeah, so it's, it's easy to suspect that guy. Yeah. Well, speaking of mysteries, and let's go to the wonderful side of the humanity spectrum, because full disclosure, we are both big Haley Deaton fans. Oh, nice. And we just, we love you as Jonas. Thank and you. it's a very well-written character and a very well-executed character, if we Thank may you. say. Yeah. So we, uh, we were just curious about several, several things about the way you play Jonas. Okay. Um, yeah, I... I personally have always told Cammie, I think this is the best boyfriend on Hallmark Channel. She has. I, I have, I, I say that quite a bit. 
Multiple and then, occasions. And then I watch it again, and then I'm like, yes, yes, this is the best written and executed boyfriend on Hallmark Channel. Thank you. I, I definitely <laughs> second that it is one of the best written. I think Jonas and Haley are very well suited for each other. It's yeah. just, and while we love all the rom-com genre, which can get a little dicey sometimes, I there's just something about how mature they are together. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot of games going on. <laughs> Well, I mean, they've both suffered the loss of a loved one. Yeah. And that's really how they bonded. And that was the first movie we shot was Jonas meets Haley. And we reveal our sorrowful pasts. And you reveal it right away. It wasn't yeah. something that like you kept hidden for a while and yeah. all out in the open. Yeah. It was just yeah. very which yeah. is super refreshing if you're yes. a, an audience member and you're like, can't we just have some real yeah. open, honest people in the world? Exactly. Thank you. I actually just watched uh, the first one today to refresh. Oh. And when and when you were talking about when Jonas was talking about Christina, his wife, and how he lost her to breast cancer, and then when Haley says, my fiance was killed, <laughs> this was the actor in me, I totally broke down your facial expressions. Oh, cool. <laughs> it was, at first it was the shock that, oh my gosh, this happened to her too. And then it was the curiosity, what was his name? And then it was the understanding of, I have lost somebody, sure. you have yeah. lost somebody. It, it was beautiful. It was three seconds, but you did it so well. <laughs> oh, was it all one shot? That I was all one shot. Bravo was to the editor on that one. Yeah, that was very, it was a great scene. Oh, do thank you, have, you so much. Do you have a personal favorite one of the uh, installments of the movies or a favorite scene from yeah, Haley? Yeah, yeah, yes. There was one, I think it was four, Haley four, where uh, so Viv Leacock uh, is also in the movies with us, as was also it from When Calls the Heart. Yes. Also uh, <laughs> from everything else. If anybody's not hiring this guy, they're just <laughs> should get out of the business. Basically, uh, he's the most wonderful person. Um, but so he's in it with us, as was Giacomo Bisato at that point. Mm -hmm. And so we were all sort of gelled. We had done three. We had done the, the big three movies. And that's sort of like, that's the most you ever hope for. You know, it's like Very you good. do one and you're like, oh, I hope I, you know, like be great if we could just do a, like the all three, you know? Yeah. Um, and so we here we were doing four and. Um, we're a bonafide wheel now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but then, you know, there were, there were casting changes. I think they, uh, one of the, the Megans who was yes. girlfriend right. uh, departed the show amicably and then they hired another actor. And uh, so there was some cast changes and things were in flux and, you know, each story sort of highlights a different character. Sure. And um I believe uh, was the was it the first one I got sick in? I was sick. second one. The second. second one. Oh yes, because yes. Uh, we have recently watched the first seven again. Right. Because those are the only ones on Hallmark movies now currently. Oh, interesting. So Maybe I they don't want to show the last. I want to see the last two again. again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we both want to see the last two again. <laughs> but luckily, seven was there. Seven, seven is one of my favorites as well. So. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, yeah, but so yeah, I think just in four, it was just the coming together of the cast. We were all gelling well. Uh, we were working. I put some money on this again with Alan Harmon. Ooh. We had we had been working with Michael Robeson as a director, wonderful man, wonderful director. Uh, he, I think, had a prior commitment. And so Alan was brought in, maybe. Uh, I know he was in for one. It could have been four. It might have been Terry Ingram. We're well. going to go back and test these facts, you know, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. let's go. Alan Harmon for Terry Ingram five. Okay. Yeah. And um, uh, so, so, and then Kelly. Kelly is, is the, the honest glue and the gel and the spark and the spirit of the whole 
show, obviously, <laughs> but also truly as, as a person and as a performer. And um, uh, it was, I think it was the first time we all felt like, oh, we're all just coming back together now. You know, we're not meeting each other. We're just all coming back together. And that was just the overriding sense of uh, gratitude that I had during the filming of that movie. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just some, some uh, fun scenes to do. Um, I think that's where Haley and I, you know, we start to do a little uh, sleuthing ourselves and we got to play with a little physical comedy. Um, which is always fun. <laughs> which is great because it's, it was so nice to have Jonas leave the hospital. Right. <laughs> and when he, he's the medical examiner, so he's wearing, you know, he's got his serious hat on and he has to when yeah. he's at work. So even if there's an emotional thing that's happening, I have to keep a level head here. <laughs> So it's, it was so nice for Jonas to get out of the hospital and, you know, you see more and more of uh, the real, you know, the, the person he is when he's not at work, when he's not wearing that hat. Uh, when and when he's not wearing a tux. And when he, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, had to. <laughs> no, I get, I I'm probably shared that photo amongst my family, sends it to me more than anything else. It's a great photo. It was a very good photo. Dashing doctor. Yeah. Yes. Dashing. <laughs> yeah, my mom was very happy. My mom was, oh, so handsome, Matthew. <laughs> Thanks, mom. So you mentioned Viv. And you know that he is now a current member of When Calls the Heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he actually, I don't know if you know this, but he is on it with his two children. I do know that. Oh, you do know that. Okay. Yeah. So... Describe getting to know and working with Viv Leacock in three words, if you can. <laughs> <laughs> Best times ever. Ooh. All right. <laughs> That's getting to know and work with, right? Yeah, absolutely. Best times ever. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, and then to expand on that just a little, <laughs> truly wonderful guy. Truly wonderful guy. Also three. There you go. <laughs> Just a different three words. Yeah. Yeah. So we have been told we haven't been able to interview him yet, but that that is definitely a goal. Because I mean, put we, it in your calendar. Great. He might have he might have like fall twenty twenty four available. Right. He's a busy yeah. guy. <laughs> he really is. He really, he really is. is a busy guy. Um. Yeah, he, he really is, but he deserves it. And he's so good at what he does. And he's so appreciative. And he's so such a great example to the rest of us, in all honesty. What an example that man is. Good for you, Viv. Love you. <laughs> we're going to send him that snippet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we love you too, Viv, just so we're clear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, when you first started on When Calls the Heart, uh, were you privy to what this story arc was going to be for Wade? Did you know he was the saboteur? I knew, I think there was a, a, a character description in the audition and something to do with, and you, you see this a lot. It's something to do with, you know, they give you the age, 30s, uh, charming, charismatic, new man in town, very helpful, especially to our leading lady, <laughs> who 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 doesn't rebuff the the interest. But he may just turn out to have a darker side. <laughs> so I was like, "Gotcha, okay." So the thing about here. that is that, at least for me, I. I just try to play it as genuine as possible. So if I'm there working with Aaron, falling in love, having a great time, great. And if I am trying to steal some money, then really just like try and cover up and hopefully nobody finds me out. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. 
Yeah, we really, we really liked Wade at we first. E even knowing he was kind of sort of a threat to the Jack and Elizabeth storyline, it was still, we were like, but he's, he, he's but a great like character. <laughs> he's, he's basically Dillinger. He's basically Clyde, you know, he's, but better, he hasn't killed anybody. No, so he's, true. He, basically what he is, is he's an unsung American hero who got his just desserts, uh, and a relationship was saved, but Wade is still out there. Wade is, you know, he's he's spent a long time riding the rails, uh, but he's got he's, he's he's cooking up something else right now. Oh, in prison? I don't think he's in prison. Oh, you don't think so? No, 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 no. See, Jack actually is kind of a friendly guy, so we hashed it out, and uh, I managed to escape. I don't know if I should reveal this. Oh, <laughs> we're at the edge of our seats. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think uh, I I slipped off into the into the night. Good old Wade. Well, our theory is that in season ten here, they're going to have their hundredth episode, and they're going to have a lot of cameos. So. Oh yeah. Our theory is that you know we'd like to see a lot of people back, and you know if that's the case, maybe maybe we see Wade someday. Has Daniel made an appearance again? Um, he was in a dream sequence. Uh, was that on movie? on When Hope Calls? On when Hope oh, Calls, yeah, which is yeah it wasn't When Calls the Heart. It was When Hope Calls, but it was as the character of Jack. And was it like? Uh, reused footage or did they shoot no it? no he shot a new scene with Lori Loughlin oh nice so speaking of Wade and Jack that apprehension scene where where he apprehends you and and kicks your feet out from under you with, with the with the rifle mm. was, was that was that a, a stunt that you were able to do on your own or was there a double for that uh no that was a stunt that we did ourselves and um, I don't even, I think the, well, I think the vibe of it was they had just asked before we shot sort of during uh, fittings and, you know, uh, pre-production of mm -hmm. that, the first of, of that final episode or probably in the filming of pre prior episodes before we got to that scene. They just talked about, you know, is this stunt something you feel like you can do? Uh, I had already told them I could ride a horse and I can, so. Uh, <laughs> Finally, <laughs> we yeah. have somebody who can ride. <laughs> oh yeah, How, did you guys judge my riding? Did you? No, no, no. Oh, no. There are several people on When Calls the Heart that didn't actually know how to ride when they got hired. No and doubt. said they did. No <laughs> doubt. But then they probably don't know how dangerous it is. So they're just like relaxed and probably do a very good job of it. <laughs> point taken yeah uh so yeah it was a stunt that they you know they asked are you comfortable with this we talked to daniel and myself and uh we thought yeah yeah we can do that it's a little something like this a little something like this let's put a mat under some leaves everything's great well it was well, it very turned well, out great yeah it was very well choreographed did it take a lot of takes to get no did you I think fall we, on I the think, ground a lot <laughs> i think we shot like maybe two two shots for each size of frame yeah. so we did two wides two mediums and then a couple of, of tighter things uh maybe an insert or two just to like really sell a, a hit or something like that <laughs> what about the gun flip <laughs> yeah he like yeah gun around because that was a pretty cool gun flip <laughs> yeah yeah um if i was into that kind of thing that would do it for me for sure <laughs> So you got to play opposite of three of the most main characters of the show. You got to play opposite of Kevin quite a bit, Aaron quite a bit, and Dan quite a bit. So can you pick a favorite moment of working with Kevin? Um, I, I, maybe I'm just this guy, but it sort of sounds like I'm just so happy to be working with all these people. Uh, Kevin turned, oh, so Kevin is married to one of my favorite cast and directors in town. Oh. And I had just found that out, I think, 
And when I met Kevin on set, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> you guys are married. What's going on? And so we, and you know, I've been trying to get work from that casting director for years. And so I know, I know her, well, I mean, I know them quite well. You know what I mean? Uh, that uh, you, there's just a long relationship there. And so to meet Kevin, and I was like, oh, well, this is, you know, he was such a, a great guy to work with as well. Somebody also very into uh, the, the work, the art of it, uh, understands how to keep things light and how to have fun while still being professional. And th that's really the best that you can hope for when you go to work. You know, sometimes you can work with a super big star and it's exciting, but then they're just closed off and they're doing their own thing. And so you're like, well, okay, I'll do my own thing and we shoot and it's it's still a great experience but it's a different experience than sure. when you're on set and you guys are all there mm -hmm. you know? i think and i guess for me that 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 is part of that creative process yeah that i agree makes it real for me mm -hmm. is is the being able to see really into someone's eyes yeah we had Kevin on the podcast before Sarah came on and it was, it was just what you said. He kept things light, but he answered everything. He told some great stories. He's a great mm -hmm. storyteller. And so, yeah, it, it was fabulous talking to him. You could see the genuine article. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and it, it's, it's so true. So it's, you know, you come away from meeting and working with a man like that and you're just like you feel enriched you feel like you've made the most of what you're doing with your life that day right you just, you've had a, <laughs> a very positive experience and it's it's a really rewarding sort of feeling you know you you feel like you've done a good job you've worked with great people mm -hmm. and they're going to have you back for another episode wow life is great <laughs> What about Dan? What was the favorite experience with Dan? Very last day of shooting, very after the very last scene, and I believe it was the the fight scene. I think oh. we saved that for the end. Uh, and it was about everyone was about to go on hiatus. I, mm. I don't think it was Christmas because there was no snow, but it might have been December, and there was just no snow. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, Daniel was, uh, he had brought a bottle of scotch around and was <laughs> making the rounds to the hair and wardrobe and just oh, <laughs> having a tipple with everyone. And he was, of course, was, you know, he had a, a drive home. So, uh, uh, so he um, brought his guitar out. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, just brought in the, the great vibes and cheer. And we had gotten to know each other fairly well uh, during our time on the show. Yeah. And enjoyed working with each other and, and, you know, found interest in what each other is interested in. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I was like, oh, wow, you play guitar. I do too. So I think after the shoot, um, we, there was like, so one of the buildings there, this is a big secret, but one of the buildings in, uh, in Wind Calls the Heart in Hope Valley is uh, not just a set. Somebody lives in one of them upstairs. And it's basically the, the set supervisor who just lives on set and um, manages the property. Oh, yeah. And uh, so we went up there and I was like, oh, somebody lives up here. And so we, we jammed up there and had a little more uh, uh, whiskey. And um, it was just like a really good time because that was, I don't think it was quite the send off, but I don't know if I'm mistaken or not. But I'm sorry. Episode, I think it was episode eight of the season. Of season three. I think so. And Daniel left in season five, did he? Yeah. Yeah. So you're to yeah. you're you're at the end of season. Well, you're midway to the end of season three, and then yeah, he left in season five. So right. Um, but yeah. So I just uh, that was just a really wonderful moment that we had. You know, it was uh, it was just a, a great 
you know, little thing to do, you know, that's not specifically solely about work that you're just like, right. you get to hang out and live a little. Yeah. What about Aaron? Aaron, uh, also just a really wonderful, lovely person to work with. Um, she didn't hit you with the hammer, did she, by accident? <laughs> I, I don't think so. Really, though, just uh, just a wonderful professional to work with. And uh, we had talked about her time. I think she had gone to, um, and so something that I was so interested in, but I think she had gone to uh, Juilliard. Mm -hmm. and, oh, no way. What's that like? Tell me what happened. <laughs> and so I kind of fanboyed on, uh, I was like, oh, really? That's so cool. Do you think I could go? Is, is, is that something I should do? And she's like, yeah, check it out, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was just, uh, you know, just finding those interests and really just having a wonderful time making, doing those scenes. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, both of them, there's lots of videos of them on set singing together and so that's really fun to hear that you participated in that with them. Yeah. Definitely. Now, if only we could get our hands on a video of that. See it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess iPhones were around at that point. Not, not the way they are now, darn it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt, thank you so much for coming on. We're so, so thrilled that you could come on and chat with us and give us some behind the scenes goodies. Absolutely. My pleasure. I really appreciate you guys asking me to be on your show. Oh, we were happy to do it. Do you have any social media that fans can follow you if they want to check out your other projects and such? As a matter of fact, I do. Uh, I am at Matthew McCall, two T's, two C's. Uh, you guys can figure it yeah. out. There's photos and pictures on the internet. Uh, so at Matthew McCall for both my Instagram and Twitter. And uh, yeah, you can you can see see all this the stuff I'm posting. Really, it's a, a lot of pictures of of surfing and dreaming of of the water, uh, but also <laughs> probably tidbits of stuff I can share about what is upcoming in my work. Very fun. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, parties keep your eye out for Matthew McCall on your TV screens this coming holiday season, and we will see all of you next time. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you.